Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, having a great weekend. Hope everybody is having a great start of summer. Friday was the initial, the initial uh, official uh, start of summer. So hopefully everybody is uh, doing uh, well. Uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, we are uh, closing in on our last uh, discounted trial. Uh, Kenyon will be posting it either today uh, or in the next day or so until Thanksgiving. So if you are uh, interested in pivots, take advantage of the 30 days, kick the tires, all that good stuff. See uh, if the pivots are right for you, because if not, uh, then we will go all the way to Thanksgiving uh, for uh, the next one. Other than that, guys, again, hopefully everybody is doing well. Only thing I ask is if you could be so kind, take a moment to uh, like the video, share, subscribe, and I promise I will give you everything that I have, uh, giving you uh, unbiased technical views of the market. So last couple of days that we spoke about, uh, we talked about it Wednesday um, for the potential. Um, again, I don't want to use the word blow off top. I want to use the word blow off pause because that's exactly what it was. Uh, anytime you start getting you know, almost euphoric parabolic levels, and if you watched uh, the video on uh, Thursday, we talked about that. We had this great, great reversal on Tuesday. Uh, we were prepared for it. Um, you know, market was uh, definitely euphoric. People had the rose-colored glasses on and it pulled. Any, any single time you get that euphoria stage and we start hearing, in, you know, retail investors to the moon, to this, that, uh, that is usually a sign that the next day or so, you know, you probably will get pulled. And that's exactly uh, what happened. And the question was, you know, the question was, can we get a follow through? Because what's great about this bull market, especially in the last you know year and change was any single time we, it looked like, and it appeared that we had a very a potential of a day two reversal, the market just started ripping back up again, but not so much on Friday. And if you watched uh, Thursday's video, you know, we talked about a potential uh, day two uh, in NVIDIA, day two potential in Apple, day two potential uh, in Avago. And, you know, they played out that way. But the good point is for the, on the bulls case, it was very isolated to just the stocks that had that really aggressive run. There's still a lot of really great charts out there. We'll cover, uh, you know, a handful of names here in a few minutes, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what potentially, uh, the market can do. Uh, this week. But if you look at uh, the data this week, nothing really stands out. It's the same thing, cooling, heating, blah, 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 you know, waiting for inflation for two and a half, three percent. You know, it's the same jargon all over and over again. And they 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 emphasize, you know, they emphasize um, you know, they emphasize the the idea of it's a guessing game. And they do this every single time. This is what we want. Boyd might not be able to get to that level unless this happens. So it's it's a dog chasing the tail and reverse and, and vice versa. Pretty much the last year and a half when it comes to the Fed. Other than that, uh, yeah, for the week, uh, S and P gained six tenths of a percent. The Dow was up uh, one point five percent. And considering uh, how aggressive you know some of these, especially semiconductors, came in uh, in the last couple of days, you know Nasdaq was flat for the week. That's a very very big deal. It really does show you. That nothing is uh, pred you know, no nothing is regulated to just a handful of stocks. There's still a lot of names uh, that are strong, and we'll get to those uh, names in a second. Uh, let's just take a quick technical view. Uh, as you can see on uh, Tuesday, excuse me, on Thursday we got to the five-day moving average and it closed right on it. On Friday we confirmed it, went a little bit lower, and this is now going into Monday. This is now the first close. Uh, below the five-day moving average. Again, if you've been watching this video for a long time, you know the five-day moving average, at least for me. I don't, I don't think a lot of people <clears throat> use the five-day. A lot of people use the nine and the 20. Um, I use the five and the 10 and the 20. Uh, but you know, first close below the five-day, this is short-term sentiment. That's a, a sell signal for me, uh, at least for, for the NASDAQ 100. It doesn't mean every single stock is going to get sold off. It doesn't mean you know, the market's going to collapse. None of that nonsense. It just means that this is the first close below 
short-term sentiment. And if we confirm uh, the 478.67 level uh, on uh, Friday's lows, we could see another you know, methodical move down to the 475, 476 level, which represents uh, the 10 day moving average. That's it. That's all it is. Nobody's calling for destruction of prices. Uh, again, this isn't nonsense social media that everything either has to go to the moon and it has to go to zero. It's just organic flow. That's all it is. Organic flow. When a stock loses support, it goes to the next support. And this is kind of what we're talking about. Lost the five day. Uh, the next measure potential is uh, 475, 476 on the queues. For the, bullish ca- for the bullish case, the bulls need to get back above the five-day moving average, basically reclaim back uh, this 482.5 level. So the upside, 42.5 to the upside, uh, 478.67 to the downside for a potential next move down. So instead of like kind of splitting hairs of you know how good the market is, we know how good the market is. Let's just talk about uh, some ideas and some, some individual names that uh, are looking pretty good. Are kind of teetering the line and kind of in no man's land. So let's talk about that. So Apple, as you can imagine, uh, is going to mirror the Nasdaq 100, and you can see again. This is kind of what we talked about on, uh, you know, on the on the video on uh, was it Thursday night? You, you know, but again, you don't want to jump off the 12th floor. You know, Apple broke out a long time ago. They confirmed the earnings highs on 503. So if you're buying it here, 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 but there's always a chance. You're going to make money. That's the whole point. You know, stocks go up all the time. Stocks go down all the time. But the the, the entry level is super duper important, especially if you don't have a big account or especially if you don't have a big risk tolerance. So, uh, you know, you had your major, major upside move, just like the Qs. They lost the five day. They got down to the 10 day. That was kind of the whole point of me talking about the levels on the Qs. So now it's very, very interesting on Apple. I know they came out a little bit of a PR. Uh, over the weekend with Meta, some sort of AI co- the potential collaboration. I don't know if that's going to move the needle, but uh, you know, look at the bottom of the range here. You can see the bottom of the range here from uh, June the 12th and the bottom of the range here from Friday's uh, Friday's sequence. It's pretty much the same. You know, This is kind of a line in the sand here uh, for Apple. Again, not going to zero, but if it does start losing the bottom of the range here, it could go down to this 202, 200 level. So it's, again, very, very important to, to kind of gauge where the cues are and kind of see where all these stocks are in the spectrum of uh, where their technical damage may occur. Uh, you look at other names, again, NVIDIA was the first one uh, to really get hit, right? You had this big, big reversal, lost the five-day, lost the 10-day. The only reason why it stopped on Friday is this linear regression line. Again, most people will not use, a li- don't even acknowledge the linear regression line, but that's, again, it's another very, very uh, pure form of su- supply and demand. You can see how it stopped here perfectly. So on Monday, if we start losing, and again, they were coming with some pretty aggressive, you know, 123, 120 puts uh, for this week. So let's see if they get paid off. Uh, let's watch if N- NVIDIA starts losing the, the linear regression line. It could go down uh, to this 120 level. So definitely a name uh, that I'm going to be watching for uh, this week, especially for Monday. Uh, same thing, uh, same chart uh, with Apple, same chart with uh, Avago. Avago is teetering on, on the bottom range where it gapped up. Now it's filling its whole gap on earnings. You know, it's again, it's the same level from the, the gap up on earnings to Friday's channel. If it starts losing this whole range, you know, it should test uh, the rising 10 day support of roughly 1624. So, again, so you're getting a lot of carbon copy looks. Uh, in the market, especially in the technology space, um, you know, in, in a lot of a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, the name, for example, like GameStop. You know, uh, with all the saga, Roaring Kitty, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, again, look, I mean, it's it's getting very very close to the bottom of the range here, guys. It really is. You got to watch this bottom range. Uh, it's now demonstrated lack of enthusiasm for about a week and a half, including this inverted hammer, which is obviously a sell signal. So you have you know you have five six days. Uh, that is correlating to this inverted hammer. Now, look look how close this thing is to losing the bottom of the range here. Again, name uh, you definitely want to uh, watch. Again, the buzz is slowly starting to uh, remove itself where it was two weeks ago. You're not getting the same aggressive uh, you know, YOLO, um, you know, $100 calls, $50 weekly. So again, it's one of those names that you know maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing for, for its future. Uh, again, I don't want to discuss the whole fundamental aspect of the company, but from the, from the technical trading point, it is at the bottom of the range here. If it starts losing the bottom of the range, uh, it can get hit. Uh, Tesla, you know, again, in no man's land, very disappointing stock for not only for uh, shareholders, for long-term shareholders, or probably down 30, 35% 
on the stock year to date, but for traders as well. I mean, every single time it looks like it's about to uh, set up for a day two move, it never comes. It just doesn't come here. And uh, you know, as much as I love the stock, and you know, this is my favorite stock in, in my career. I'm doing this for 25 years. I've now, you know, put, you know, I, I've, I've kind of put it to the side on most days. I know the levels. Trust me, I, I know exactly what levels they need uh, to go higher and to go lower. Uh, but I, you know, I don't intensively watch it like I, I used to every single second of the day. I just set alerts and I watch the option flow, and I, I want to see if the stock can, can get out of the channel. So here's kind of the bull and the bear case, right? Uh, you can make a case and say, well, it's a bull flag. It gapped up. Now it's sitting in this whole formation. You can make a bear case as well. It's a bull, you know, it's, it gapped up. It's putting in lower highs and now it's teetering on the bottom of the range. So, so again, something is going to eventually give on Tesla. We all know this. Okay. It's not rocket science. Eventually, no matter how crappy the range has been for a long time, we still find pretty good pivots on Tesla. We always know the, the major levels. We always, you know, even the days that they don't get the second day follow through, we'll still catch up three, four points because that's how important the levels are. So I know the levels coming into this week. I know the upside level. I know the downside level. So it's not going to be a surprise when the stock wakes up. But as far as putting all your mental eggs in one basket to try to watch it every single day, you're going to miss other things that have better setups. But again, I'm definitely, definitely watching uh, it this week. Uh, stocks that held up very, very well, not only held up very, very well, but are busting out here. Uh, you got Google this week, uh, held up really, really well, despite, uh, a lot of weakness from a lot of names. Uh, you know, again, this is the highest close, uh, in this whole formation. Let's watch this thing this week. You know, any strength above, uh, Friday's channels can get going. Uh, Microsoft continues to be a workhorse, right? It's just been just kind of grinding higher. It hasn't had that spectacular blow off pause day like an nvidia or smsi or avago it still continues to grind again let's see if it takes out uh last week's highs and starts uh pushing uh forward but the one name that continuously it, it it's it teases right it teases because everybody knows how great they are uh is amazon um they have their prime day coming up shortly <clears throat> if you're like my family we're constantly ordering from amazon even if it's like rolls of toilet paper just constantly having deliveries but this is one of the very few names that have not broken out, okay? It stopped on Friday on this linear regression line and Bollinger Band here. This is a double supply zone. If it can get back above the supply zone, I mean, Amazon has a shot to get to those May highs. And if it busts those May highs, 200 uh, could definitely be uh, in its uh, future. And, uh, you know, look at Carvana, right? Look at a name like Carvana. Carvana had a monster, monster gap up then did nothing for two months, uh, has been attempting to get out of this channel here uh, for several months here. Let's watch this thing this week. There's a lot of short interest continuously in the stock. Uh, and if the stock continues to act well, it gets above this Bollinger Band and the highs of June, maybe this thing really starts waking up uh, and starts getting into the 120s. Very, very important. And Zillow, right? Zillow, uh, I continuously really like. It's forming a nice long base. Um, this thing is just, you know, imminent. I, I think it's imminent. It's going to have an expansion day. The longer it continues to base, uh, the longer there's a probability it's going to start p pushing into the 50, 51 area. So it looks good. Other than that, this week was very solid. So, you know, it took a little bit of, you know, small, you know, everybody takes losses throughout the week. Um, the, the great part about when you're trading range is you don't need to sit there down two, three, five, ten dollars $10. You know, if the stock fails the range, you got to get out. So for example, on Friday, uh, I took a long on uh, AMD, and this is another name that's you know one hit wonder. You know, had this really really big move and just kind of died out again. You want to make you know if you want to make a case, it was an inside day on Friday. Okay, I can roll with that. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt going uh, in. But yeah, here's my point. So I got long off this sneaky channel here. It got rejected off this channel here. Again, I'm not gonna sit there and watch this thing go down three, four, five dollars. You know, got out of it. You know, down about ninety cents. And who cares? So that's the whole point when you're trading channels. You know, the stock action, the price action is either going to really get aggressive off that level or you're going to have a skin knee. And that's the whole point. Lose pennies to make dollars. Uh, I closed off a uh, path. I was long, uh, excuse me, I was short uh, for about a week and change. Went down 40 cents. It held the range, reclaimed back the five and the 10. That's my, you know, exit to get out. And yeah, I lost about 40 cents in the trade. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing crazy, nothing there. Still holding. Uh, Neo about 60, uh, 60 percent of position. I'm up about 45 cents in the trade. I'm waiting for that next leg down. 
Uh, so the point is when you are trading, uh, whether you're a long-term investor, swing trader, intraday trader, you know, you have to know your max pain. You have to know your max pain before the trading starts because if you don't, you're you know you're you're a deer in headlights and you're gonna be hoping for things to happen instead of letting things happen uh, technically and organically. Other than that, pretty solid week. And video was. Uh, exceptional this week, especially uh, on the downside. Um, we had some good, some good moves, some, some really, really good moves this week. So I'm looking forward uh, to uh, this week's uh, action. We will see if the queues can get back above the five day. If not, if they confirm Friday's channel, we should have at least one more day of back test. That's it, guys. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have an awesome Sunday, and with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.